recalling the proudest moments of my career, there are three or four things that come to mind, and I have to consider all of them that are important, different aspects of my career. I've been teaching for 28 years, and I've been fortunate enough to perform at the Midwest Band and Orchestra Clinic in Chicago in 1991. That's a very proud moment. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in 2003. I've also had my current band, Briarwoods, involved in the a Carnegie Hall performance twice. And we were in a nationally televised bowl game on ESPN this last year. I'll say with all of those performances, the moment that I was most proud was when I looked at the group and realized that all of our efforts, all of the teaching, all of the hard work had culminated into a moment where we could all be on a national stage, an international stage. I remember seeing a television monitor when we were in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and seeing my band on national TV while I'm standing there watching them. And right in the middle of the performance, the cameraman tapped me on the shoulder and said, wow, good for you, they're awesome. And that was a great moment for me. I remember being so proud of those students. I also have the unique perspective of this past year, my daughter, who is now a ninth grader, is a part of my band. So every time I'm a part of a performance now, I see the band through my daughter's eyes. One of the most significant challenges that faces myself, and I think all current music educators, is trying to keep up with the technology that our students are now using just as a part of their everyday living. They have now more access to more, to have teaching techniques and apps that help them learn, enjoy music than any other generation, and they don't always use it as effectively as they could. I always tell them that they, if they want to find anything in music, they can always go to their computer, to their phone, and they can find it, but it's how they use it once they find it. Learning something on the internet is instantaneous, but perfecting something on an instrument or a musical technique does still take practice, time, it takes measuring your talent and how you utilize it. Probably the most important thing to do is to keep up with the trends that the students are experiencing in their lives, the technology, the cultural differences, the changes that we all have to go through in our social lives as we grow up, and as a teacher being able to relate to my students and keep up with how they look and how they feel about their lives and how they feel about the world. Technology has drastically changed the way I approach my students. As I am becoming an older director, I also have to keep up on current trends so that when a student talks to me, I am also very, very aware of what's going on. Yeah, a couple One of weeks ago, the uh, blues great B.B. King passed away. And of course, the morning that it, that it happened, it was all over the news, it was in the internet. I checked into it, I found out some of the details when my students saw me at school that day, Mr. Minnick, did you hear about B.B. King? And immediately, because I had knowledge of the subject, went into it and I began to also not just teach them that yes, he was a great blues guitar player and a great singer, but why was he a great musician? I try to add on not just the headline, but I want to give them the substance behind the headline. One of the most unique and innovative things I do in my teaching is I have extensive leadership training with my, my students, both as teachers and as also as musicians because my goal is to empower them and give them the musical training so that they can take ownership and help teach the other students that are maybe younger than them how to become as good musicians as they have become. I feel like whenever you teach a musical organization and it's only come from one person and for lack of a better word if I taught like a dictator where I was the only one that had any information to pass on there's so many things that would be lacking because there's many great ideas with my students that I'd like them to pass on to other students at the same time you can't have the chaos of everyone telling their opinion all the time so with my leadership training we learn the chain of command we learn the the way a, a rehearsal is based and I teach my leaders and my first chair players in particular I teach them how to train translate what they're doing effectively to the younger players that may not be at that level of skill yet. One of the greatest things I love to see is whenever I have an upperclassman working with a, an underclassman and I see them come to a point where they're both performing at the same level because they've shared ideas. I think the most important thing that I can do in my teaching to make a, an, a lasting impact on my students is to teach all of them to be lifelong learners and to take all of the knowledge that they've accumulated in school and their academics and in their music and to develop a blueprint of success that will follow them the rest of their lives. It's so important that they understand that the patterns and the skills and the habits that they have now as teenagers are going to follow them the rest of their lives. You can't just start being a scholar when you get to college. So it's important.